Hello, 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 hello. My name is Linda Murray Bullard. They call me the business plug. And today I am going to plug you in to link to expert. But before we get to that, I'm going to tell you a couple of things. The first thing is that if you would like to be on the business plugs mixer, there's a link in wherever you're watching this video, go ahead and subscribe and click the, the bells. So you can see when we're on, normally we're on Sundays at 7 PM Eastern time, but we're doing a special series called the million dollar business idea series. And so this series is to help you to get from wherever you are to that million dollars. I'm bringing on different people to talk about what they do and how they do it. These are business conversations for business people. And so we're going to be talking about a lot of great things. Also, it's open enrollment for the building your own business 12 week course. So if you are stuck, if you are new, stuck, or you're struggling and stuck, there's also a 12 week course where we're in 90 days, we can have you next level doing things that you never thought possible for you and your business. So that link is in the discussion session of this description section of this as well. At this time, I'd like to introduce to you my good new friend, Joanne Whalen. Hello, Joanne. How are you? Hi, Linda. Thanks for having me. Uh, well, thank you for coming on. So tell us who you are. Joanne Wyland, Wide Land When You Can Fly is I like it. Oh, the help. Remember, I used to fly all the time, so help people remember who I was. And um, I'm a connector and I love collaborating and connecting people. So thank you for that's how we got connected. Somebody connected us on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, I know it. I know it. And and, and I like it. Why why land? Why land when you can fly? Right. <laughs> right. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm all about soaring. So yeah. So tell us about Joanne as far as what we're doing to link to experts. Well, I, I can tell you this, that I love your topic because I used to travel. That's like I said, I used to fly. I've traveled over a million miles. I was doing that back in the day in sales when you really physically met with people. I love seeing you, Linda, in Tennessee and I'm in Florida. But I also, you know, back then we actually flew and met the person for breakfast, Absolutely. lunch, or dinner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so um, these incredible business owners that I worked with for 20 years had incredible ideas. But Linda, the average person, I would say only 5% of them actually implemented those ideas because I would go back and visit them or follow up and stuff. And I was shocked and I wanted to know why. And I found the 5% that did hire they hired somebody to help them implement their idea hire somebody like linda okay mm. because a lot of times we have great ideas but if we don't have the team or the know-how or the knowledge or um some whatever the, the missing link is or missing links that we have we're not going to really implement it and get to those million dollars that you're talking about and so i but i wanted to know why 95 percent of the people didn't hire somebody and i found that the average business owner worked in their business, not on their business. They actually did sometimes go to a networking meeting, um, but they usually sat with the same five people. And so they knew those other, you know, five people and those five people knew those five other people. And most of them, because of the fact that was the only meeting they ever went to or whatever a month that they didn't really get to know more and how to find people like Linda. So because of the fact that I traveled to new people all over, I was doing global alliances way before it was cool. I love it. I love but that's it. just because when I meet somebody, I think, Linda, you got to meet Harry, you know, and then I tell you why. And then we were, you know, do the connection. So I thought, well, Norman Vincent Peale was my very first mentor. He's the power of positive thinking guy. Absolutely. And I'm telling you, he used to tell me, I always felt like he was talking to me, but, you know, it was on back then tapes and reading his books. But Linda, he'd always say, if you find a need, fill it. Kind of like you're talking about with this series, okay? You all have ideas. So I thought, oh, I found that there's a need here that, that you know, the connect, you know, somebody to help them connect people. Yeah. Because that way they could implement their ideas. Well, so I did. I finally actually, I was working for a company called Intel. You probably heard of them. They're inside almost every computer. But the, but the point is 
they were doing downsizing, right sizing is what they call this. So I was able to take a package and leave and always started a business that I wanted to. So it was all about the connections. And so, but back then I literally did it the way that most people would know how and the, what was really available. I would don't know these executives. I would call them. I would find out what their idea was or what their challenge was, what their problem was. And they would tell me. So then I would look for candidates to help them, you know, with that challenge. Mm -hmm. And so then usually I would have two or three that we could talk to. And I would, again, go to the boardroom. Back then they, um, you know, we again went physically to the boardroom. We would have the board there that would give all these, ask me all these questions about the three people. You know, has Linda written, written a book? Does Sally have, um, has she ever been quoted on Inc. Magazine? Did Larry, does he have any videos? It would go on and on and they would just all ask me questions. And all I did was write down their questions because sometimes I didn't have it readily available. And even then, because those consultant coaches, trainers, team builders were also out physically with people, it would take a while for Linda to get her book <laughs> over to, you know, Marianne because of the fact that, you know, you were at a conference speaking or whatever. Right, right. So this, I said, you know, and it would take months. And by the time we got everybody what they needed, it was crazy. To, but a lot of times we lost a deal. I'm just going to tell you, because it would take months. And then another fire drill came in that they needed somebody else instead of that person right now. Or they lost the funding because something else came in that was, you know, over budget, you name it. But it always happened. So what I, I shouldn't say always, but mostly, um, but Linda, what was really interesting to me was I realized it was you had to be able to get them who they needed as fast as you could so they could make the decision and go on. Yeah. And as time went on, I mean, this was back in 2007 now is now where, where I'm talking about. So technology was just really, you know, getting stronger of, of being able to do things like this. So I felt like God told me, just like you always say about what's your idea. My idea was to build a portal is what God told me. And I know it may sound crazy, but I asked so many people, especially programmers, if they could build me a portal. And they're like, what's a portal? You know, uh, but I don't know. But if you pay me $150 an hour, I could figure, you know, we'll I could figure it out. I said, well, God didn't really give me the blueprint. He really <laughs> gave me the idea. So um, anyway, so luckily I, fa I found a team that could help me do it. They did uh, 12 of them in, in the past. And they were all for real estate, but at least they understood the importance of being able to find somebody, see their videos, see their, you know, their uh, information about them. So what we did was we, it took us three years, but we created it because we first did research of what these executives really wanted, what the experts, the consultants, coaches, team builders, trainers, facilitators, authors, we just call them experts rather than say all that they were looking for. We, um, did, we, did research with event professionals because a lot of times they also need you to speak like you're going to be speaking in May. You said we're talking about, right, right. Uh, you know, uh, so that these ex other executives see them know what they can do. Because what I also found is a lot of executives don't even know what an emotional intelligence coach is just as one example, because again, they sat with those same five people. So they didn't really know. And so we were doing all this research for a year. Then we started building it. Then um, it, we had to do beta testing for a year because when you have something this massive, each person that wants to be known as an expert gets a 40 page website mm. and it has everything you'd want to know about that person. Because again, all those board meetings I went into and they would ask me about Linda, if she's had a book, does she have any videos? Does she blog? Does she have any articles? Was she quoted here? Who, what organizations does she belong to? What's her, you know, flight, flight, um, preferences. You're going to laugh, but some people even want peach towels in their hotel room. Oh, yeah. But, you, I, know, I, I, you know, <laughs> if you can ask for it and get it, ask for it. But so all that type of information <laughs> can be found. So when the board is trying to find out if Linda's the right person, they can easily look at it from anywhere online because, of course, it's on the Internet. Right. And they give their thumbs up or thumbs down immediately. And we find the perf they find the perfect candidate because the other thing is 
I found uh, we were also the bottleneck when they had to call me to ask Linda if she was available May 13th. And Linda would say, yes, I'm available. Then I'd call back and they'd say, oh, we're so sorry. But, you know, we moved it to the 17th. Can Linda speak on the 17th? And so, as you can see, it, you didn't need to talk to me to talk to Linda. So now every page has Linda's phone number on it and they can call them directly once they know that they're the right candidate or possibly the right candidate. They call you. We call it a seven minute strategy session. So you, can, Linda, can also figure out if you want to work at that for that project or even if you want to speak at that event or whatever it is, as well as them knowing if you're the right candidate. So it's really, truly a win, 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 because they need to talk directly to you to find out more information like your availability and stuff, even though your calendar is on link to expert, but they might have, you know, a different date or whatever. So it's all good, but it's just, you know, like you were saying about the million idea, million dollar ideas, but that's what, where I feel like you and I are talking the same language, especially because now without everything's been working since 2010 like this, we've fine tuned it. We constantly make it even faster, better, um, more broad. Um, last magazine we send out to 317,000 people. So we constantly are growing our reach because we know a lot of people need to know who you are before, you know, they want to know if they can hire you. But when you said about the million dollar idea series, I thought it was brilliant because of the fact that, again, people that have the million dollar idea and they need, because even our experts hire other experts because nobody's an expert at everything. And if they say exactly. they are, Linda, I would say run because, <laughs> they're, you know, it's really God gave us all gifts, but he didn't That's give amazing. us every gift, you know. No. No, no, and no. So I really think that it's beneficial for all aspects. And then we're constantly adding the media too, because we know, like for an example, we just sent out a press release this morning. We send one out every month for the last 11 years because we know a lot of executives read things on the business wire and they think it's gospel truth compared to reading a blog or, you know, uh, even watching a video. They just feel like if you put it over the business wire, it's truth. And so then you can, but what I wanted to get to with that is that, you can be found as the expert when you're looking for it. So you can also implement, maybe that's your million dollar idea that you wanted to help. Like you do, Linda, you help so many small businesses to grow. And so I feel like it's there for everybody because sometimes we need an expert and sometimes we want to be known as the expert. Absolutely. And for different, you know, in front of different people. And then when we work pe with people like you, a lot of times too, then you will have, a, will have a resource now after this interview to use Link to Expert to find other experts to bring on your show. So it's a real win-win-win because a lot of times people don't realize it, but even the media needs interesting people to be on their show for people to continually watch it or listen to it. So it really does make sense for all of us to collaborate. And so that's why we call it a collaborative cloud community because of course in the cloud, we all can be like we are, you know, connecting and being, I don't know, 600 miles away from each other. I'm not sure exactly how long, uh, how far it is to Knoxville, but. Um, oh, I'm in Chattanooga. Oh, I'm Chattanooga. In Chattanooga. Yeah, yeah, yes. I'm in Chattanooga. I'm speaking in Knoxville. <laughs> this is what we talked about and I got it mixed up. But so anyway, I hope that that was a really long No, no, no. no but but, but I, I get the drift of it is because we are so distant, it's a way of collaborating and it brings us together, right? And so I have I have coaches, I have experts, people who consider them experts in different fields. I have, you know, cooks and, you know, just about anybody who owns a business become, can become an expert in what they offer. And one, one revenue stream can be public speaking. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't matter what you sell. Like you can become the subject matter expert for that item, that product, that service. Right. And so, you know, and, and then the book part, um, I, I hung out with Steve Harvey for two years. And what one of my coaches said, well, you know, that book becomes a, an expensive, uh, that book becomes an expensive business card, but it can open doors. 
Oh, and it's so impressive. I know it sounds weird, but a lot of people don't care who you are, but they care who you know. And if you're connected with Steve Harvey, you got to be. <laughs> no, but it's really crazy. But that's what we thought of that, too. So like when, when somebody uploads a new blog, just as an example, on link to expert. You, we distribute it to all their contacts because they also have a CRM within their link to expert 40 page website. But three other people are always mentioned. So mm. you get exposure to each other's people, but you don't get each other's contacts. Right. But same with the newsletter goes out twice a month for the last 11 years. Everything that happened in the last two weeks, Linda's new video, Harry's new book, because you can also sell your products on there because mm. I'm a big believer too. When you have a million dollar idea, you not only want to just focus on that one part of it, you can actually repurpose things. We actually have 181 ways they can make money using wow. LinkedIn Expert as, you know, their platform. Because I feel like so many of us do speak, and I think that's wonderful. But a lot of times, too, we don't realize we could have passive and residual income as well. Like you said about your book, you can sell that while you're sleeping. You Absolutely. can convert your book into an audio book. You can convert your book into an ebook. You can convert it into a white paper. I mean, I could go on and on. But seriously, people don't realize whatever they have, they can repurpose it. Because again, like the executives that I knew wanted to read the press release, but some people would rather read the blog so they can reply to it and ask questions. Yeah. So everybody is different. But again, you take that same type of content and you just repurpose it so that it works for different audiences because some people are going to want to listen to you. Some people are going to watch you and some people still like to read. Absolutely. What, so... Yeah, and that, that's the thing. And that's what I talk when I'm teaching my business owners about reaching their target customer. It's very important for them to reach them in the manner they are used to getting their information, right? So yes. if they are visual, I'm a visual learner, but I'm also a hands-on learner. So okay. I have to do it. I can do it, but but show me one time and I got it and I can take it from there, but I have to do it. I can't just watch somebody else do it and get it. Like mm -hmm. I have to hands-on. Must she took me earlier before the show that she can even network the computers together. Absolutely. Like, well, good for her. I just seriously, I couldn't do that. <laughs> Absolutely. I build. So when I, you know, when my kids live at their home, like I plug everybody in, like I, I set up our network. So, but my middle, my middle son is the computer uh, genius in our family. And so anything I can't do, I, I bring him in because <laughs> he has an innate ability that I don't have. But, right. yeah, but, but basic stuff, I can do basic stuff with just about any computer. I've been doing computers since 92. Wait, yay. Yeah. That's really, seriously, that is impressive because, you know, a lot of times that's one of the things that people need to hire somebody to do. So congrats. Yeah, when you said that, you said, yeah, because I need to hire. I'm thinking, hire somebody. I've never hired anybody. I just get in there and get it done. Right. <laughs> But 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 that's because in being a business strategist, it is important for me to know multiple ways of getting my business on this next level. So mm -hmm. I can work with an IT person. I can work with a, a restaurant person. I can work with somebody that's selling candles and perfumes. I can work with somebody that's selling clothes. Like I, it is, it's because. In my life, I've worked at all these positions myself. So right. No, not but it knowing, makes a difference. Yes. Yeah. Not knowing that it would lead to this, right? Where my my diverse work history actually comes into play. Exactly. Sometimes, I, you know, you when you're going through whatever you're going through, you're wondering, oh God, why do I have to have this job or why am I doing this? But like you just said, then later on in life, it's like, ah, that's why I had to work there. You know? I, yeah. Yeah. I've been working since I was 14. And so, you know, 48 years of, of working it, making it happen. Right. And all these different industries doing all these different things actually pays off now. And, right. and the reason I know that is because I had my son. My son will be 49 next month. And so right after I had him, I went to work. And I, I've i worked in all these different industries. That now I'm getting to help people get into these same industries that I used to work in. That's wow. my That's my competitive advantage is I've mm -hmm. actually spent time in various industries. It but is yeah. so true. And you know what? I know you said about, you know, where people are used to finding their information, but I also find that sometimes if you look at other industries and you adopt 
the way they promote to their people. I mean, just try it for six months or whatever. And you might be surprised how many people would also find you because of that, instead of only going with just say, you know, a, a typical directory, you know what I mean? And so I just invite people to also try new things as well and don't only go with what your industry supposedly calls the, the normal. Yeah. Of the fact that sometimes then you get lost in the in the, that crowd because that's where everybody goes uh, for that. Where what if you did, like we're on Linda's show and all of a sudden you got in front of all these new people and you know either they need you or they know somebody else that needs you. That's what Absolutely. we also find. A lot of times they might not need you right now, but again they sit with those same five, six people, they know Harry needed somebody like Linda to help him, you know, with his candle business. I mean, yes. who knows, but it seriously works. Oh, it's yeah. a collaboration. And I feel like that's, is the power that we have nowadays with being able to do things like me being on your show, you know, and online, it's just powerful. Absolutely. And, and visibility is everything, right? Like yeah. being visible, being visible in as many ways as you possibly can. Yes, you know? that's what I mean about the repurposing, Linda. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, because a lot of times I run into so many introvert business owners. They're so cute. <laughs> but I run into them, but I talk to them about, you know, of having their faces on my show or, or creating, a, doing live videos or whatever, being a, creating a YouTube channel. And they're like, YouTube channel? You mean being in front of a camera? Linda, no, no, I don't want to be in front of a camera. And I'm like, okay, we're going to have to do the Beyonce thing here, right? Because Beyonce is the one I go to when in her normal way of doing her, she's very introverted, right? But she's created a persona, Sasha Fierce, who is what everybody thinks that is her. They're like, do you know Beyonce? Oh, yeah, she's a performer. She's this, she's that. And that's her Sasha Fierce. Because her right. Sasha Fierce is who she becomes when she's got to get her money. Right. And so, you know, I teach introverts how to get to their Sasha Fierce. <laughs> no, and I love it because I learned again back from Norman Vincent Peale, because I'm truly an introvert. <laughs> but I, I figured if he could do it, and he said how shy he was and painfully shy. And I thought, well, if he could do it, I can do it. And literally, what I found it is my secret to, to becoming extroverted and now like be on your show like this. I take time every day to do something alone. Mm. It's in, with me, it's nature. Like yesterday I went for a walk in the woods. Okay. And, and when I take that time to be alone with God, I call it, and I can become extroverted then. Yeah. I don't, I'm not automatically extroverted, but when I kind of like charge my battery, of having my alone time, then I'm ready to meet the public. But if I don't charge my battery, I do feel I get a little bit like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm gonna be on the show today, uh, you know. <laughs> and so it's weird, but I feel like you know a lot of people that we think are extroverted possibly could be introverted too, yeah. and they need somebody like you, Linda, to encourage them because of the fact that we all, I think, can be in our own way, it might be, it's not always the same way, but it really, for then you, that's why I feel like you help them figure out what is the way to get your message out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because um, my, I have nieces that were performers and they were actually, I don't know if you remember, but there was a show called the X factor. And yes. it had Simon Cowell, it had LA Reed, um, it had uh, Demi Lovato and it had Britney Spears on it. Well, my mm -hmm. nieces actually tried out for it. And when they tried out for it, they were in, I think, San Antonio, Texas, and, or Austin, Texas. And uh, Simon Cowell told them they didn't have TV presence, stage presence. So when they came back home, they were like, he selected us, but he said we didn't have presence. So I went to our local community college and hooked up with the theater uh, instructors there. And ask them, would they look at my babies and help them to get presents? So the wife took them down on the stage and she was working with them while I was up in the booth talking to the husband. And he was saying, well, you know, uh, 
Harrison Ford is a friend of theirs. And the couple actually came from New York. And he said, what I learned about, and I was telling them about, you know, what Simon said about my babies. And he said, you know, Harrison Ford is shy. If you ever see him on TV, you know, Harrison Ford is the Indiana Jones. Yeah, guy. but I would have never guessed that either. <laughs> yeah, but he said he's, he said he's an introvert. And he said, if you notice how when he's doing interviews, he always makes jokes because he doesn't want to be there. <laughs> he doesn't want to be there. But if he's in his next big thing, he has to promote it. So he right. has to be there. So he said, but Harrison Ford taught him to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Oh, I like that. I, I'm, I'm yeah. a note taker. I keep writing. Oh, that's OK. Me. But but get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Right. And so I I took that away from that conversation. By the way, my my nieces did make it to the final rounds. And we actually spent a week in the uh, Jackson, the Jackie Gleason uh, theater in Florida. Wow. In uh, South Beach. We yes. stayed a week in South Beach while they filmed. But they I actually know. made it to the, to the final rounds. But yeah, but, but this is when they were teens. They're all grown now. But yeah, but, but the X Factor, that whole experience taught me about stage presence. And in business, businesses need to have stage presence. They need to have somebody to see them. People need to know, like, and trust you in order to work with you. Right. And so uh, know, like, and trust is, is immensely important when you're trying to be a business owner. Right. And so even if you're introvert, you know, that I, I get that. I do. And I tell you, I love my, my little introvert uh, business owners. I love them. But I know I have to nurture them a different way. Right. <laughs> you know, right. But, but people need to know who you are because not only are they buying your, your product, your service, they're buying you. Mm -hmm. Like if, if if you think about where you like to shop and you go there time and time again, you probably have conversations with somebody in that place. Yes. Like somebody in that store, some type of body in that boutique. Like there's some personal relationship that you've built with somebody. That's how people shop. And right. so that's the next level. I always tell my, my students that um, it's like the Ingles, right? Little House on the Prairie. Like yes. Ms. Ingle knew everybody's business. She was... <laughs> we have to become a Miss Ingles and and know you know know when somebody's sick and 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 know what their needs are and she addressed their needs. They never came in the store and she didn't have an answer for them. Right, but she True. was a business and she was personable. Like that's right. the level of customer service it takes in order to be successful and to get that million dollar idea where it needs to be. Like to get it through those thousands that are before that million. Right, it's true. Yeah, yeah. It's a process. And I think that's the other thing that you just hit on that's important for people to know. Everybody that thinks everything's an instant success, it's usually at least an instant 10 year success or an instant 20 year success. Uh, so don't give up. In other words, I want no. your listeners to know it, it's a it is a process. Sometimes it's trial and error, sometimes it works, you know, really good, really fast but it fizzles out all different ways, but just whatever you do, never give up. Yeah. I, I Sherry Raff, um, she's on one of my shows that I watch about Abbott elementary. She said, I just love it when people talk to me about my overnight success that it took me 40 years to get. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> she's an overnight success. She's got an image. She's getting this. She's getting that. She's like, yeah, I've been out here 40 years. <laughs> right. That's thank you for sharing that. Cause I think we all need to be reminded of that when we, you know, sometimes get frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it can take a while. It can take a while. But right. Yeah, so talk to us about, so what does it look like to become a part of link to expert? Well, there is, well, it is free for the people that are looking for, to find the expert. Okay. okay? So there's no charge. Um, the experts do have to qualify because like we said, they're consultants, coaches, team builders, trainers, facilitators, anybody that wants to be known as the expert. But there is a qualification process because when we send out these press releases and all these different ways that we just market link to expert and tell people that you can come here to find an expert, we can't have somebody that was just laid off last week and says they're a life coach now or a business coach. So, you know, and, and I feel bad about that sometimes, but then I tell myself, no, we do just like you just said that, you know, the 40 year instant success <laughs> and most experts really, truly what I find, they have to have been doing it at least five years. And even 
if they were, they were just doing a part-time, just like you with having all that expertise from all those previous experiences, usually that they worked at least 10 years with that same type of expertise. Yeah. Yeah. Whether they were an employee or an entrepreneur. So, you know, we, we do take that into account, but like I say, you can't just decide, okay, this is it. I'm, you know, I'm now. an expert. Yeah. I'm an expert. You know, right. so, it takes, it takes, but, it, but the sooner you get started, the sooner you get there. Right. Right. So, and a lot of times you don't realize it, but what you have been doing is important because I didn't tell you, but when I was, you know, trying to, when I told you I left Intel, they were so nice to give me all these, um, uh, what do you call it? It was called right management. But in other words, six months of trying to figure out what I wanted to do next. Yeah. Well, one of the things that they all did was test me and others, um, you know, kind of like, what's your strengths? What's your mm -hmm, weaknesses? Mm -hmm. Things like that. And mine kept saying I was a connector. And I thought, well, big deal. Everybody is. So that's what I wanted to bring up, Linda. Seriously, I think so many times like me, I thought, well, big deal. Everybody is because whenever you're good at it, you might think everybody else is. And then I started trying to figure out who was the last, when was the last time somebody connected me? And when they did, how did they do it? But it was so rare that mm. I was shocked. But again, then I had to learn the next step was how do I monetize being a connector? So it is even a process figuring this out, but you might want to take some of those tests to figure out what you're good at and really realize not everybody's good at that. Like Linda can network the computers. I, that's why I was so shocked. I'm like, you're going to have to pay somebody to do that. No, I won't. But, you know, <laughs> so if she can do that. I can't, you know. So um, do you, you see what I mean? So I feel yeah. like you could sh share with your listeners that they really have some talents that are really, really gems. But sometimes you have to have somebody else tell you, because again, when you can do it so easily, you don't even, like you said earlier, you even have worked with chefs. And I was thinking, man, I'd love to have a chef because I'm not very good at cooking. You know, and tell me that the person that you deal with, you know, they love it. And they have yeah. all these beautiful, delicious meals up. And here I am just trying to figure out, you know, what can I make tonight that's pretty quick and easy? <laughs> You know? Absolutely. I think, you know, I think God gave all of us different talents mm -hmm. and they don't duplicate. Right. Like right. even I, I had a student who had he was a, a painter, a car right. painter, auto, automobile oh. painter. And he said, well, me and my buddies, we've kind of lined up next to each other and we work. He said, well, how we coexist is one of them likes to do the car the paint of the cars with the candies and all the different you know you've seen the old cars painted with all kind of candy oh, signs and all that one like to do that the other like to bring back classics and so he would paint the, the color the car it was originally and then the other like to do that two-tone paint where if you look at it one way is this color you look oh, at it this way, cool. it's, a, it's a totally different color all of them were experts in what they did but they were able to coexist because they understood their lanes exactly it's so important it really is it, it's huge yeah so knowing knowing what you're good in and being able to to niche down and get in your lane people say oh no just be all over the place i've heard from some very million dollar people that the riches are in the niches and that and i i choose to believe them because they're already there Right. And even the niches within the niches. Yeah. Seriously, because a lot of times, you know, if you're an expert, it is a niche within a niche. And, you know, and of course, then it's a specific type of group that you want to focus on. So you learn then how to get in front of them and, you know, stay in front of them. that. I just want to, you know, quick step in on that. I really feel like that's the other thing people don't realize they feel like like they wrote one blog and everybody's going to remember who they are. Unfortunately, I, you know, I was in sales and marketing and I even worked for companies like, you know, like Intel that you think everybody knows you, but you had to consistently and frequently stay in front of them with some kind of way message of why you can make the, and how you can make their life easier. I feel like that's the other thing that people don't always realize when you're doing these messages in front of people, really hit on how you're going to make that other person's life easier because that's really what they're asking 
they might not say it to our faces, but they are just saying, well, how, Linda, how are you going to make my life easy? Absolutely. What's and, in it for me? What's right. in it for me? Absolutely. Right. So if we can hit on that uh, with our messages in some form or fashion, that is, is really key too. Don't you think? I agree. And, Absolutely. I, 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 right. I couldn't say it better myself. Right. Because they're wanting, they're wanting us as business owners to resolve whatever issues they had to make their lives better. Right. And so we have to show them what's in it for them. A lot of times we get stuck on the features that we add for competitive <laughs> advantage. Right. And so understanding the difference between features and benefits, right. right. They're interested in the benefits. They don't really, you know, couldn't care less about the features. The features is what puts us above everybody else. I don't care about that. They want to no. know, <laughs> they want to know, solve my problem. How are you going to solve my problem? What do you have? What are you giving? Exactly. Yeah. And that's why with us, it's the unique database exchange program. Mm. What I explained a little earlier, because I, I know most people pay a lot of money to figure out how to get more people in their database mm -hmm. to have more connections, which don't, I'm not saying stop doing that. I'm just saying when you join Link to Expert, you, we even say you automatically go from zero contacts to 65,000 in 24 hours because of the fact once you join, now you're in front of all these other people's. And really, like I said, sometimes we reach hundreds of thousands. It depends on which avenue mm -hmm. we send but on a regular day to day basis. We at least reach 65,000. And um, that's priceless because of the fact that if you never it figured out how much your time is, but think about how much, you know, what you, your billable hours, how many hours you spend trying to get in front of all these people. And are they even the right people? Because again, let's just be honest. We usually sit with those same five people as well. Not everybody, but most people. And those five people are usually your friends, families, and neighbors, and they are not going to hire you. I mean, no. I, I hate I, I sometimes no, true. Bad saying that, but it's true. So many times they, they go where they're comfortable. Again, if they're introverts like me, uh, oh, I feel better with knowing, you know, Linda likes me, so I'm going to go hang out with her, you know. But you, like you said earlier, too, about speaking, speaking on, you know, whether it's on stage or on a camera, or whatever, to get in front of more and more people. And then as much as you can, if you're doing it on your own, get their contact information and follow up, put them on your mailing list. So when you send out your newsletter or whatever, and the other thing is most people forget to do all that. That's why we automated all that stuff for you. Mm. So you don't have to do it because of the fact that we know, especially me growing up in technology, I told Linda I sold it, but I didn't know, I didn't know how to use it like she does or make it work, you know? <laughs> and, but, but that was the other thing that I found the average person that wants to be known as an expert, they really are brilliant at what they do, but that doesn't mean they're brilliant at technology. That doesn't mean that they know a lot of people. Um, so it really is a way we, we try to take the automation out of it for you. And it, it's all template based. It's so simple. And again, you can stay keeping adding people to your database. We recommend you do that, but this way you immediately get in front of so many people and we do even have something called consider the value so you can see how much time really you don't even realize that you're spending doing that. And maybe you could be spending that time instead on stage or wherever or on Linda show or whatever to have content than to get in front of those people. And then when we were talking about repurposing, a lot of times we don't realize even the stuff that we've been doing for free, we can package it with other things and sell it as a product or a service that can be done, you know, without being involved in it, that you Absolutely. some kind of packaging, depending on what type of expertise you have. But I really feel like a lot of people don't realize either about the value of multiple streams of income. Absolutely. And, and I, well, I, if they're on here, they, they know, because I learned from uh, Lisa Nichols, who told me if you are doing just for yourself, you need three to four. And if you're trying to do generational wealth, you need seven to eight. So I teach that loyally because oh, Lisa was so gracious to, to uh, share her experience of how she learned that. And so, yeah, we always talk about multiple income streams. What I don't want people to get all discombobulated about is selling multiple products, you know, 
I'm chicken in the morning. I'm hair at night. I'm selling tires on Sundays. Like, right. <laughs> like that's brand confusion. And your the customers don't know what you sell. You sell too much is what it is. But if you can niche down and say, okay, I sell chicken, be the best chicken expert in the whole United States and the world. Like, right. be that. Sell it barbecued, uh, roasted, uh, raw, absolutely. fried, you know, because you're absolutely right. Because I'm embarrassed to admit, but I actually did that too in the beginning. I started <laughs> selling different people's stuff as well as mine. Mm. And people are like, what do you what do? What do you do? Yeah. <laughs> Sure. Aren't you the chicken lady? No. <laughs> Not right now. I was this morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this morning I was. Today I'm the hair lady. <laughs> right. I'm so sorry. Definitely. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Linda. So thanks for teaching them that because sometimes we don't realize that and we're trying to, um, you know, get things going. So I'm not knocking that, but especially if you're out promoting that to people, they really do get confused. Absolutely. Yeah, because, because what, there's an African proverb that says you can water one plant better than watering many. When you are, are watering all these different ideas, you are limiting and diluting your resources. Yes. If you can just focus on one idea and use all of your resources to get it to where it's prosperous, it will pay for those other things in time. But you have to get that one idea off the ground first. Right. And then that umbrella, that's where you can come up with all these other Absolutely. multiple streams of income. Yeah. But you're right. Get, get that one going. And it's amazing then how many other things will come out of it. And a lot of times, again, you don't realize it, but you might have it stuck in a drawer somewhere and an idea that didn't work maybe in the beginning, mm. but now that you kicked it off, Damn it. Dust that yeah. off, bring it out, you know, put that, you know, as a product too, because a lot of people, the other thing is that I find over and over is people love tips because they're, they're want everything short and sweet. If you can tell me the top seven tips on how to be the best chicken <laughs> seller, whatever, you know, I'm making fun now, but, but, but no. it, we do need chicken. I eat chicken all the time, but, <laughs> but, you know, versus reading a 30, I mean, 300 page book about chicken, you know, so. Absolutely. We're I, the I, shortcut as, as a coach, you're the shortcut. And you know what? You can sell your tips for a lot more than your book. I'm just being honest. <laughs> I mean, people will pay a hundred. I mean, I have some people pay, you know, a thousand dollars for a how-to manual because then they can buy that too. And now they give it to their, somebody on their staff mm -hmm. and now they have a step-by-step -step how to create. Absolutely. This. It becomes a training manual. Absolutely. Right. It becomes yes. a training manual. I get, I get the whole thing. I help with uh, big companies do SOPs like in all these solopreneurs who right. are at the million dollar market feel like, okay. I can't grow any more than this. This is my capacity, right? And so I go back in and I help them to uh, break down those different jobs that they do so they know exactly who they need to hire. Yes. Yeah. So we do job breakdowns. I'm a project manager at heart. I've been a project manager since it. 2012. I've been a certified project manager since 2012. I needed you in 2007 because this <laughs> took a thousand different ideas. I had to, you know, like try to figure out how to link them together. Yeah. But I did have a team. See, that's the other thing. I love what you just said. I, I was so blessed because I was a mentor for the MBA students at University of Tampa for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And the professors always gave me all the international kids. And they weren't always kids. Sometimes, Linda, they were our age because they were going back to get their MBA. But all mm -hmm. different walks of life, all different cultures. It was priceless because I got to learn what their feedback was for creating this portal that we call Link to Expert. Mm -hmm. from different parts of the world, different age groups, different cultures, everything. And the, the reason I'm saying that is if you don't have a mastermind team, get one. That's actually how I first started it before even the students. I was on two different mastermind groups and it really, really helps because you can bounce ideas or hire somebody like Linda as a coach because of the fact that you can't think of everything on your own. And I really, really think very strongly of that you really do need, like they always say, it takes a village to raise this child. It, it, it didn't take a village to Raise grow business. business because of the fact that sometimes you need Linda, sometimes you need Harry, whatever different people. And that's the other reason we created this so that you can just hire them when you need them, not put them on your payroll. Cause when we did this too, when remember I got right-sized, well, a lot of companies were doing the same thing. 
they couldn't, but what really, and if you really look at it, the people that are an expert, they aren't needed every day of the year to work there. Right. And, and it, like sometimes they're only doing that particular type of expertise three months out of the year. So the other nine months, they're just say asked to do spreadsheets and I'm not knocking spreadsheets. I'm just saying it's yeah. l- less than what they c- are capable of doing. Mm-hmm. And so they get bored, they get frustrated. The employer gets upset because they're paying, you know, the expertise um, salary. Yeah. 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 They really only needed them for three months. So many times we find they leave, they still get hired back from that same company for those three months. They need them. The company's happy because they, you know, only paid for the three months. The consultant now is happy because now the other nine months of the year, he can work for somebody else and bring his talents to the table. So it really does again work. And I always say win, 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 but that's really the goal here Mm -hmm. to make it work for everybody. Wonderful. And so as we close, can you please give us your closing remarks that you want? Like, tell us who specifically needs to be contacting you once we're in. Well, if you want to find an expert fast and hire them, or if you want to be known as an expert and, you know, maximum exposure, continually growing the database. So I'd say both finding an expert or looking for an expert because you can't always be an expert. You can't even always know an expert, but you can always hire an expert. Absolutely. Absolutely. And by expert, she means that you have niched down and you considered yourself already to be an expert. Well, this is an opportunity for you when she said it goes out to 65,000 people. Like what would it mean to your business for 65,000 people to find you? To, and to consistently, frequently. Yes. Yeah. And that's the other thing, because every time you upload something new, it goes out again and again. We recommend you do it every week. But even if you do it every other week, it, it, you don't realize the power of that. And you actually get to see how many people read your blog, how many people watched your video, how many people in real time, how many people listen to your podcast, whatever it is. We also believe that you need to measure it as well, Linda. Actually, absolutely, because measures are important. What doesn't get measured doesn't get done. You're right. That's my project management days. I love it. <laughs> we measure everything. We measure everything. We measure everything. But yeah, but thank you, thank you, thank you for your yes. Thank you for coming on and being a part of my million dollar business idea series. Thank you for offering this tool that business owners who are coaches, who are experts, who are subject matter experts out in their fields to give them another opportunity to get in front of the people, the decision makers who are looking for their services or their products. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your yes. My name is Linda Murray Bullock. They call me the business plug. I just plugged you into link to expert. You all have a great week. I'll see you Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And we'll go ahead and like Check the bells. Do all you can to know when we're on. We'll talk to you on Sunday. Have a good rest of your week. Thank you.